China is out here doing the most. The speed of China is super ultra fast. How fast is it? Well, let's dive into that today on this video right here. Super, super fast. Look, to put it in perspective, how fast China construction speed is, Tesla, California mega pack factory took 14 months from groundbreaking to start of pilot production. So from the groundbreaking to the start of the pilot production, it took 14 months. Tesla's Shanghai mega pack factory is already 45% completed after just three months. Yeah, you read that and you heard that right. After three months, it's 45% completed already. See, China be on one when they're actually doing something. And there's a small possibility we could see pilot production start at this factory by December. Really? December? And it just started three months ago? <laughs> Yo, that's about to be half of the speed. Let's say a conservative estimation. Now, let's look into it a little bit more. And as you can see, Tesla shared a progress photo below, as well as the first rendering of what the factory will look like when completed. A $200 million factory, yeah? Initial capacity of 10,000 units per year, 40 gigawatts an hour, and 10 billion of revenue per year from this one factory alone. 10 billion. So an investment of 200 million, and then a revenue of 10 billion with a 20%, 2 billion profit projection, because we have like a 20% margin on there. So hopefully we leave with 2 billion. All right. A new factory covers an area of 200,000 square meters and aims to export mega packs to overseas markets, including the Asia Pacific region to support the global green future. And when it comes down to Asia, they're consuming green energy and sustainable energy products like nobody. Asia, you know, it actually consumes the majority of food and energy in the world. And most of you guys might not know because you're Americans and you don't know anything. <laughs> no, I'm just joking with you. But for the most part, the majority of the human species lives in Asia. It's Asian population. It's 60 percent of the human race. That's a lot of people. Right. You got one plus. I think it's like one point two billion people in India and one point five billion plus in China. That's a lot. It's eight billion in the world, guys. OK, so that's a good amount of people just in two Asian countries alone. It's 1 billion Europeans spread across North America, Europe, and et cetera. Like, come on, man. So as you can see, this is the factory. This is 45% completed, right? And this is the rendering of what it's going to look like when it's completed. $10 billion, 200 million in, 10 billion in revenue, hopefully 2 billion in actual profits that this factory will actually profit per year, hopefully. Of course, that's when it get ramped up and everything else. But if you're just looking downrange at things like this, then you can understand. And what's very interesting, I'm going to provide you something that you normies don't get to see, right? We got Weeble, and this is the actual VP, Vice President of External Affairs at Tesla in China, okay? So we're going to be looking at her account, and she's going to be providing the same information in case you guys don't believe that guy. You're like, oh, man, you keep showing me Twitter. And that's not a legitimate source. So let's go straight to the actual source itself, right? Happy fifth anniversary. And in the past five years, the Hong Kong drifter, I have anticipated in a wonderful journey of Tesla Gigafactory and experienced rapid changes in the area. And now Tesla's first energy storage Gigafactory outside the United States is also speeding up construction with the progress reaching about 45% striving to run at the Tesla speed and Ling Gang speed. Ling gang in the building again, looking forward to the next five years. And of course, she posted that. And for some reason, a lot of people are not following her, right? Like, I would marry this lady. Okay, let's continue. <laughs> see, I'm a gold digger. <laughs> and if you see what she's saying right here, she's saying it is worth buying and also economical to use among nearly 30 brands compared by consumer reports. Tesla's five year maintenance costs are the lowest and these are all the brands in china and in comparison the big homie the one and only tesla's at the top so you're always talking about these chinese competitors and they're competing with us and they're going to beat us and they're going to eat our breakfast lunch and dinner and dessert but when you actually go down to the source that's a lie that's a lie we're out here winning man's is winning 
And so shout outs to her. She's done a lot of good things over there at Tesla. Now, this is the second biggest contribution Tesla has brought to the Chinese auto industry. It has solved the problem of distribution according to the order. The first is to drive the realization or revitalization of the entire industrial chain. And it is a healthy drive to help China's new energy climb to the top of the world. See, these guys are looking for domination. They're always out here doing the best. We out in America doing the most. Again, make Americans great again because y'all steady slipping. And so it's really interesting to see that firsthand, to see what's going on. I think that this project is going to be amazing. Let me get some footage, all right? I'm going to pull up some footage. But in the meantime, I do want to show you guys this. Look, man, China got all types of incentives. Here we go. Here goes some news right here on the ground with China. China always trying to do the most. Stop trying to compete with us. Fall off, China. Fall back, okay? <laughs> we, we don't want you to compete with us. All right? Fall back. Let us do what we got to do, which is whip up on you. You know what I'm saying? But you're not going to let it happen, so I get it. But at the end of the day, come on, man. Don't try to compete with us. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit, right? I want to kind of just, you know, blow into the future without any competition. That would be best. I would like it. I would really appreciate that. Now I'm having a hard time pulling this up for some crazy reason, but let's get to the article. News, China cash for clunkers policy to fuel 26 billion more EV sales. And it's not going to be in Tesla's favor. I mean, it could help us out a little bit, but the government announced the last month it would double trade in subsidies to $20,000, to scrap an old, higher emission car and replace it with an EV. So they're giving out money here. Wow, that's an aggressive move to inspire others to accelerate EV transition. I think it would significantly help to mitigate pollution levels and reduce dependency on oil imports. And China is something that can understand that because in China, they had terrible pollution in the past. Now India is number one at the pollution. But then at the end of the day, it was pretty terrible in China. So as much as we like to make fun of it, their air pollution was terrible. They have no choice if they want a better rating for air quality in their cities to not only just actually move in the direction of EVs, but also look to figure out how to build out towers for air purification and all types of machines and systems that are going to be built into the infrastructure to reduce those pollutants that's been put in their environments when they ramped up for industrialization. So they have a lot of backstepping that they need to do in order to correct their environment, which is air quality. OK, we're not talking about climate change. We're talking about the quality of air, the pollution, the gas, the oil, all this other stuff. OK, so no need to get up in here and argue. It's a hoax. OK, China knows it can't be a great nation while dependent on foreign oil to fuel its economy. So EVs are two for great for the nation, great for the climate and more so great for the nation. Right. I'll read you a kind of a portion on the next video about the competition between the United States and Asia. Asia's moving into sustainable energy because they consume massive amounts of energy. Energy security is something that they're going to have to focus on because they consume a lot of food and they consume a lot of energy. And if they have to depend on other country, countries and regions to actually fuel them, into their future, then they're always going to be buying at double the price, right? Profits is going to be marked up for profits and middlemen and all that nonsense. So if they start having sustainable energy, they plan on taking their natural resources and selling it to the rest of the world versus them no longer needing to rely on fossil fuels. So they're out pimping us, bro. This is what we did back in the day when we was out here pimping the engine. We were doing great with industrialization. China always making moves. No matter how much we disagree, Chinese government always leads by example. It should have been the U.S., not China. Well, I wish it could be the U.S., but we got some dumb people running for president. No disrespect, Trump, but you're pretty stupid when it comes to these things, especially technology. All other governments should follow China's lead, cash for clunkers. In the long run, it will save governments money. And then also it would just be more effective and efficient. Duh. And then also it creates more jobs. Y'all trying to bring back old ass jobs, like bring back the coal jobs and the oil jobs. Like, man, nobody want to do that no more. <laughs> like, let's just put up some panels, some freaking wind turbines and some tidal turbines and all this other stuff. 
hydro, geo. Like we got so many different types of alternative energies that we can create jobs around, create jobs direct and indirect. Like, come on, bro. This is a whole revolution that's going on. That's going to create a whole new ecosystem and a whole economic system. But we're just like, no, nah, man, let's, let's drill, baby, drill. Stupid. <laughs> you be drilling, other countries are going to be having flying saucers and shit. China leads the globe <laughs> in renewable installations and EVs, and now they are beginning to phase out coal. Not bad at all. And they're going to be the actual controllers of the actual new energy. And then they're going to help the rest of Asia out. And so they're going to be peddling the products and service to the rest of Asia. And we're going to be looking stupid, egg on the face, because somebody wanted to still drive a freaking Ford 150. Man, get this off my goddamn screen. I'm hoping you guys will get a little smarter, but I'm not too sure. They are experiencing Tesla speed at Shanghai Gigafactory. I wanted to show you guys the mega factory construction, but... I don't get the video coming up, unfortunately. And that video would be great because you guys can actually see what it was like or when the actual thing got built at the beginning. But I I'll at least show you this. This will be a testament of how crazy China is when they start building. Look at this stuff. Look at these engineers, man. We never did nothing like that in America. Jeez Louise. They got drones helping install cables. Man, look at that bridge. Look at that. That is crazy. They're digging through mountains and valleys. This is ridiculous. And they probably built that in two days. Man, come on. Get that off my screen. Everyone <laughs> hates Tesla. God dang. China, slow down. We supposed to be with it, rookies. See you guys on the next one. Like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you guys can get these videos. And we could possibly be informed so we can keep up with China, please. That would be nice. Maybe not. <laughs>